Hi everyone, I wanted to show a little drawing um, with color that I made to show you what my vision of the earthquake um, vision I had on the 25th, March 25th looked like. And I'm not an artist um, and it's probably going to look backwards to you because the camera. So that's what it looked like. And um, anyways, there's been a lot of earthquake activity here in California. We all, yes, we have like a couple hundred every day, but they're usually micro earthquakes. So they're very small, um, up to, you know, in the twos and threes, sometimes 3.4, 3.5, but we don't get often fours, fives, sixes and above. So, but since March 10th, um, well, we had the 6.8 off the coast of Northern California, I believe back on, um, March 10th. And then on March 17th, we had the 4.4 in downtown LA, West LA, near Beverly Hills and Hollywood. So that's a highly populated area. And then we had, um, so anyway, yeah, then on the 25th, that's when, and I felt the one on the 17th in LA, because it's about 55 miles from where I live. And it was a 4.4, but I felt it. It was like, it was 6.24 in the morning. Um, and then, you know, I was, you know, wasn't really praying. I was, at that time, I was praying for the Malaysian flight. So um, I felt it and I looked online and I saw it, but I really didn't think much of it. But then the next day on the 25th of March, I had posted my earthquake vision that I had seen, the picture I just shown you. And, um, so I felt God was reminding me that the quake that I had talked about in my videos in September and October, um, is going to be happening soon. Um, so not a four or five or six, but something bigger. And so, um, so I put the video out there about the vid, the earthquake vision. And now I showed you what I saw. Um, and then on the 28th, um, that Friday, I didn't feel any of those because Orange County is a bit further away from me than Los Angeles County. Um, there was the 5.1 in uh, La Habra, and then in Brea, right next to it, they had they had about 20 earthquakes that day, and five the 5.1 was the largest. Anyways, so they they're they're still having some aftershocks there. And if you look on the USGS feed, you'll see, um, you can see the ones in California. And, and then of course, last night we had the one down in Chile in Southern Amer in South America, and that's down along the same, it's South on the same, uh, it's off the Pacific plate as well, where, where I live, the North American plate and the Pacific plate meet and, um, that's what that's what the San Andreas fault lies on is the is the um where those two tectonic plates meet and um the San Andreas fault those other the other earthquakes we've had in Los Angeles and Orange County and off the coast of California those were all on um other fault lines that weren't directly the San Andreas fault those were um perpendicular faults or you know they weren't vertical to San Andreas either. So um, those are pretty significant earthquakes for smaller faults as those. And they were pretty close to the surface too. They weren't deep. Um, none of these earthquakes lately have been very deep, even the ones at Yellowstone. Um, and even the one, the 8.2 in Chile um, last night, it was only about, I think they said 10 kilometers or six miles deep. So respectively it's not very deep for um, the size earthquakes that we've been having um going back to the san andreas i live like five six miles away from it so it's not very far considering how large the san andreas fault is and that i'm near you know two major tectonic plates that are um moving they're moving like this they're moving like this with each other so every year there's inches or feet that it slips and um, they move in the opposite direction. And that's what causes major um, 
earthquakes along the San Andreas. The last one we had was the San Francisco one. I believe it was 1906. Um, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember the year. It's in, it was in the beginning of the 1900s when my great-grandmother was uh, five at the time. And uh, she lived in San Francisco, actually. So she lived through that. And um, that was the last large earthquake that we had on the San Andreas Fault. And it's technically it has it's scheduled to have one a large quake along its fault line every hundred years, so it's overdue. And they know that one is coming along it. They just don't know when. Um, it could be any moment to within the next twenty eight years, because um, a couple of years ago they said it would happen within at least thirty years. But I feel, as the Lord has shown me, as one of the things to be ready for um, from May 2012, not the only thing, but one of the things to be ready for is the earthquake. And I believe it's going to be one on the San Andreas. It's going to be a large one. And so, um, yeah, that's why. And then hard times are coming, so other things are going to happen. It's not just the quake, but whatever it may be, uh, I'm just doing my best to be ready. So in, with that in mind, I, I went, sh you know, I went grocery shopping today and then I was just noticing at the stores that I was at that there were, there was way more of an abundance of bottled waters, um, even cases of gallons of bottled water instead of just separate um, gallons. People were buying, and they people were buying them, you know, cases with like six gallons of water in them. Um, more dried foods out, even like the end caps, there were like stocks and stacks and stacks of like cases of green bean cans of green, you know, six cans of green beans in a box. So vegetables and fruit and um, rice and water. There was just a lot more items that would be for long-term storage and um, emergency supplies and so and people were buying and so I think not only the earthquakes we've had here in LA and Orange County um, in the last week and a half but the chilly one um, yesterday last night caused people to um, realize that they needed to prepare in case you know California does get the big one and so, um, which is a good thing. I'm glad, you know, maybe the Lord, that's part of, that's one way of God's mercy and, um, is to get people to realize the need to prepare and to have food and water in case the power is out and there's no other way then the stores are shut and there's no other method to get food and water. So I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm glad that God's so awesome and faithful and, um, he gives us the opportunity at least um, to foresee danger and then to prepare ourselves for it as Proverbs says. So um, with that in mind, it's just interesting to me, you know, it's amusing in a way, but it's not because a lot of these people aren't Christians. Um, so of course they're going to see the news and they know what they feel what's happening because they can, I felt the one, the 4.4 that was an hour away from me on the 17th. Um, so th that gets them into gear and gets them re prepping and getting ready, you know, in case there's a bigger one. And, um, but I've had so many people, not so many, but I've had people mock me and, um, belittle me for, you know, and trying to accuse me of fear mongering when I've put out the warning for, um, the possibility, you know, well, I know, that the a larger quake is coming to California. And so when I put that out there, um, you know, people want to say, oh, you're just fear mongering. Well, you know, I'm not just assuming and I'm not presuming. I'm just passing along what the Lord has shown me with a dream and um, what he's told me and shown me. Um, so it's, I believe that if God says it, it's true. And that we should actually, if we're Christians, if we're brothers and sisters in the Lord, you who live here in California, 
I would think would want to listen to me above, you know, somebody else that's just on the news and just saying whatever they've been told to say because the Lord has spoken. And so, um, yeah, if they, they'll, I'll have fellow Christians mock me, even like one person who goes to my church or a couple people and like saying, where, where's that earthquake? Where's that earthquake, Cindy? You know, it's like, okay, well, they'll mock me, but when it comes, then they'll say, oh, and then they'll say, well, it was a lucky guess. Well, it wasn't a guess, first of all, because the Lord told me that it was coming. I shared what he told me so people could be ready not to be fearful. Um, and then, but if they hear it on the news or they feel a small one come and then they get prepared, then they're, what, is that not fear? They're not having fear because the news is telling them to be ready and, oh, watch out, the big one could come. And then they go and buy stuff at the store. So they'll listen to the news and they won't mock the news. They'll believe what they hear on the TV. But yet what I feel, what I know the Lord's told me himself, the creator of the universe, if I share that, they're not going to believe that. So they'll believe the worldly news, but they won't believe something that the Lord says. It's just, it's a, it's, it's a little perplexing and disheartening, um, yet amusing at the same time. So anyways, whatever it takes for God to get people prepared, I say amen. And um, I'm just glad that he's giving the opportunity. So um, again, I just, you know, pray for all of us in California if you don't live here. If you're here, I ask that you would seek him and find out if you should prepare. And also let's put um, Yellowstone on our prayer list and see, and let's ask and seek the Lord. I have a couple of YouTube friends that are going to, um, that mentioned that one of them mentioned that we should um, maybe pray and see what the Lord says about Yellowstone. And if that super volcano were to explode, that would be even more catastrophic than the San Andreas having a quake which would also be bad. So, and that could be another thing that causes the sun to be dark and the moon to be red besides the tetrads that are coming up and the solar eclipse. So that's something to pray about and um, ask the Lord to show or reveal to you if um, Yellowstone is um, a possibility because it's overdue for, even if, ge if you go by geologists, timeline with which I don't agree with because the earth is not 640,000 years or 4 million or 4 billion years old. But if even if you go by their timeline and their um, estimate, Yellowstone is long, is overdue. It's overdue for an, an eruption. So anyways, I just pray and I'm praying for everything. And I just ask that you would just join me in prayer and um, pray for Californian safety and the U.S. if um, if there's going to be anything happening with Yellowstone. But a 4.8 over there, that's sort of significant. Um, and the ground is rising. It rises about, it rose like 10 inches in a week one time. So uh, just let's be in prayer about it and seek the Lord. Thanks.